I'm recording outside today. It's just too nice not to. Please excuse me if you hear a lot of beeping. They're doing construction across the street. So if I wanted to be a successful YouTuber, I think I found my venue. But I'm hesitant to make a bunch of videos about Pathfinder because I often question, what am I really giving to the world? What am I putting into it? What's the purpose of making videos about a game? So long story short, I want to make a video talking about why D&D slash Pathfinder is important. What does it benefit the human race with? Because when all things are considered, and I'm making these videos, there's a little voice inside me that doesn't want to upset people by giving my opinion. But this is one of the topics I should least care about upsetting you over, to be frank. All in all, it, it is a game. It's total. It's a total leisure activity. But it shouldn't be degraded as just a game either, because it actually goes much beyond a lot of what other games can offer in terms of how it can benefit you in your life. And today I have five reasons for how D&D can change your life. And I'm gonna use the words D&D and Pathfinder interchangeably here. Okay, first reason, you're getting real time with real people and you're building relationships. Video games are no longer a niche. Honestly, every single group plays them. And we live in a world of screens, watching videos like you are right now, or playing games online with people. And since D&D is a community largely consisting of gamers, and gamers are largely consisting of people who spend a lot of time in front of their screens, D&D is one of the only times some of these people ever get out. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. That absolutely was me back in high school. I would come home and play League of Legends for about two to five hours every single day, and that was basically my day. Now, obviously, there's a bit of an exception if you play D&D over the internet, but for the most part, you're supposed to get around a table with some people, and you play for like three, five, eight hours, you come face to face with other people and you make real connections and real friendships. And I've witnessed a lot of times where this is really uncomfortable for some players, but through this game, you can develop these new people skills like you normally wouldn't want to, or it takes people out of their comfort zone. Reason number two is the game encourages creativity and passion. The game itself lasts a few hours, but it's pretty typical with my experience that people will talk about their characters and the adventure all throughout the week leading up to the next session. Even if me and a friend are not in a campaign together or right now even playing, then we're gonna be talking about, hey, I have this character idea, or which build do you think I should take? Honestly, if you wanna get a D&D &D gamer talking, just ask them about their character they're playing right now. I haven't met a single person who doesn't just go off on a giant tangent about what they're playing and who they're playing. People delve into these characters. They obsess over them. If you're the dungeon master, you have a whole world to build, all these stories to make and all these characters to make. But even if you're just a player, you're making a character, you're either wondering about their concept and who they are, or you're wondering about their build and how you're gonna build them in combat. And in doing this, you find yourself subconsciously throughout the week creating and building and thinking about these characters. What would you be doing instead? Would you be worrying about something going on in your life? Would you be thinking about a video game or something? You can't deny that being passionate about something creative and artistic like D&D is a good thing. It lifts people up and makes them happier throughout the week. It encourages their creativity and I've seen a lot of people who aren't that creative just sort of come to life and play in this game. Reason number three is that it's an escape from life. To those who I see get the most enjoyment out of D&D, they get lost in this world, man. They become their characters. They are in it. They're imagining and visualizing everything that the story has to offer and the scenes they're going through. When there's a new character, a new NPC, they're thinking about what they look like and how their character's gonna interact with them. And in this way, you spend the next few hours not even on planet Earth anymore. Some people need that. Some people just do not like the world we live in, but it's cool seeing the smiles on people's faces when they come to the table and escape for a bit. They are a different person. They are in a different world. You want to go out and try to save the world against a giant dragon. The consequence of death is you make a new character. You couldn't really do that in real life. When there's a real danger in real life, like a shooter, people's normal reaction is intense fear and they run and they hide, and the consequence of getting shot is real death. So being a hero is a lot less risky in this game, and you can live out those fantasies. Reason number four is it's brain stimulation. This is a game that will improve your brain. It's got mathematics, simple, I'll admit, 
but they're there. Memorization of your character's abilities and the rules. Coordinating those rules into a character build, something that works with itself, like multi-classing different characters or taking certain feats. And then of course the creativity and visualization, which uses up totally different sections of the brain. Something I commonly see happen is people who come in trying to get the easy A. Like they want to just come and casually play. But it takes a special kind of group to play that way. In the end, you do have to put some thought into what's going on. It's difficult to sit back all session and sort of be along for the ride without your character being engaged in the plot at all. You gotta think about what your character is gonna do and who they are. You gotta think about your combat abilities and the combat rules. This game will engage you. It's gonna make you think a little bit about what's going on. And for those who really want, they can think a lot a bit about what's going on. Okay, reason number five is like the reason I made this video. It's the most important one in my opinion. Reason number five is D&D and Pathfinder encourages personal growth and exploring yourself. When you make a character, how do you come up with your idea? Now me personally, I despise videos and articles giving people ideas for their characters. Call this a flaw if you want, but if somebody tells me an idea, I no longer want to use it in D&D. That's not like, oh, they have an idea for how to ambush the orcs, that's one thing, but if you're telling me you should make a character that looks like this, or acts like this, well, it's not really my character anymore, it's kind of your character, and then I get to build off of it. It's interesting seeing the ideas people come up with for the characters they want to make, or I'd argue even more so the campaigns they want to run. My theory is that when people are making these characters, they're exploring a piece of themselves. Either something they like about themselves, something they don't like about themselves, or something unknown in themselves that they want to explore further. For example, I made a character called Tender, the Warforged Upkeeper. Upkeeper was a class I custom homebrewed for 3.5 D&D. He had a library he was supposed to maintain, it got burned down, and so he was left trying to figure out what his purpose was. Throughout the campaign, I explored my people-pleasing side, the side of me that loves validation from others, and who wants nothing more than to make others happy, neglecting myself. So in combat, all my abilities would be abilities that let me shield other people, heal other people, um, take damage for other people, but I would never ever ever work on myself. I would never defend myself. I didn't care if Tender died. Because in my personal life, there's a book I've read seven times called No More Mr. Nice Guy. I suffer from a habit of trying to please people and caring what people think too much. So I took this opportunity to kind of go crazy with it in a safe environment. I literally almost killed myself from trying to please people and help people. And What's cool is my character got to grow and sort of develop his personality to find out what higher meanings were for himself, itself, whatever. Enough about me, what do your D&D characters say about you? What are you trying to get out of your characters? Are you trying to explore yourself or is there something subconscious? Or do you just like playing? I'm willing to bet that something about your character pertains to you. Even if it's something completely not like you, if you've been sort of weak and wimpy your whole life, do you play D&D to escape into playing this champion fighter or paladin who can take anybody and who isn't afraid of anybody? If you crave control and safety in your life, do you play a wizard that has an answer for everything? There's gotta be something that guides us towards the characters we play. Either we're running towards something or away from something in ourselves that we've experienced in our own lives. That's my theory. Well, aside from these five reasons, what are the reasons that you think D&D is legitimately important? How does it affect your life? How does it improve the lives of others? Why should we care about it? Why should we make videos about it? I'm gonna plug my Twitter, it's gonna be right here, and it would help me be able to get sponsors for videos, having other social media accounts, so I'd really appreciate you subscribing to that as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoy your next session. Peace out. Morning.